So today I'm going to show you how to tie up the soft pellet rig from the Jordan Holloway rig strip range. So when would I actually use soft pellets themselves? So soft pellets are good in the winter time either for F1s or for skimmers. Sometimes it can be a great starting method some places for skimmers and then moving on to your more natural baits like casters and maggots later on or sometimes where there's venues where there's lots of little skimmers you can catch on pellets all day long and this is the actual pattern that I'd use to catch them so I'm going to show you how to actually tie it up today and what we're actually going to need today is the actual rig strips themselves obviously my range they come in a pack of five and this is just the soft pellet strip um, that I'm going to run you through today so you actually need this strip um, on this strip itself it actually tells you that you're going to need an F1 pellet float so I've got one here, it's just got a 1.5 mil hollow bristle that I can see beautifully in bad light in the winter. And it's got this wire stem that I really, really like for soft pellet fishing. Because when I find I'm fishing soft pellets, I'm lifting and dropping all the time. And this wire stem just uh, cocks really, really quick. So you're back fishing really, really fast. So you're gonna need your 4x14 float. And on the actual shot, it's shotting pattern strip itself, it says I'm gonna need 011 power line. So got some Preston 011 power line here for that. Um, I've got some scissors for trimming the edges of the line. Um, it also says I'm going to just use number nine shot on my rig. So I've got some number nine balabini shot. I actually love balabini shot because they're nice and hard. They don't move on the line. And when I'm actually fishing, it's very rare that I actually move shot on the line. So these are absolutely perfect for me. So I've got them. I've actually got the pliers. These are Preston pliers. That I'm going to put the shot on the line with. I never use my teeth because obviously that's how you damage your teeth, I always use pliers, so got them. I've got some number 13 actual um, stops, just for when you've put your number nines on, sometimes you just want a few extra little trimming shots just to get your float really dotted down. Really important for winter F1s and um, skimmers, because they give you the slightest, smallest bite, so obviously having your float dotted down is really, really important for that. So I've got number 13 stops. I've got a loop tire for tying a loop in the end of the line that you actually attach my hook length to and then I've got a black marker pen so I actually just use this black marker pen just to put a little mark on the actual line itself so I know exactly where to put those number nine shots so that's that and then I've got just this little file just because obviously the wire on this float can be a little bit harsh on the silicon sometimes so I just sometimes just gently file the float down before I start making the rig up just so it doesn't cut into my silicon it makes it a lot easier and quicker to put silicon on basically so I'll just file the edges of this float stem down a little bit just to smoothen them off a little bit and then I've actually just got some silicon for the actual float itself and obviously this is Guru 0.3 mil silicon it's nice and fine silicon so it's not going to hinder presentation really you know it's going to sit nice and smooth on the float and it's just going to make um, like presentation a lot better basically so better presentation the more fish you're going to catch so what I've actually just done there is filed the edges of the float down here I'm just going to do a bit more there because it's just a bit rough and I get it nice and smooth, so obviously I'm not going to put the silicon on in a minute. Obviously I want to make it as easy as I can for myself. So I'll get that nice and smooth like that, so it's not going to cut into the silicon. So he's ready to go. And then I'm just going to cut three pieces of the actual silicon off itself, because three pieces, you know, you don't want your, your, um, your, your float to move around. And three pieces, I think, is just the uh, perfect amount. So what I actually do is cut one piece about two, three mil long, like that. Cut another bit the same. And then I cut one bit a little bit longer, probably probably a centimetre long, because I like that bit just to overhang on the float. Because obviously, if you don't have it overhanging, if you just move it up the float and have the bottom of the stem sticking out, it can rub on the line and it can break your line sometimes. So always have a little bit overhanging on the bottom of the float. So now we're actually ready to tie the rig up itself. So what this actual strip has on it is a little hole on one end and a groove on the other. So what I actually do is get the hole and place it on the slowest bit of the rig mate itself, because obviously the rig mate comes with the ruler from zero to 70 on as it is. I put the whole end on zero over the pin, and the groove just sits over this pin on the actual other end. So now the strip's actually on the rig mate. I'm gonna get my 011 power line, and what I've actually got on this rig mate today is the rig mate extension, and basically it just gives me extra line for when I'm actually going to put my float in this shotting tube, which I have set up here, just gives me extra lines so I can put my float in the tube and then put it back on the strip and then put my number 13s back on if I need any fine tuners to dot that bristle down. So 
I always make my rigs up with this extension on now, just for just for that extra line when I put it in the shot and tube. So just um, I've just took the metal collar off on the actual hand wheel, put the line on, put that metal collar back on, put the hand wheel on, tighten him up, not too tight because obviously I need to put the float on in a minute. So get to where the end of the line is, cut it really nice and straight and that's nice and smooth. It just makes putting the float on really easy. So just put it through the eye, thread them up the line for now, put them in front of me. Get my uh, silicon on, obviously the two smallest bits first, like that, thread him on, thread the next smallest one on, and then that extra long one on, the overhanging one. I like to thread them all on the line first before I put them on the float. Perfect. Perfecto. They're on. Just tighten that up now a little bit there, just so I've got a little bit of tight line. Just tighten up a little bit more. Just so I've got a little bit of a tight line now to put my silicon on. So I've obviously I've got my float on the line, I've got my three pieces of silicon, and now I'm just gonna work the actual float bristle through them silicon. So there's one. I move that bit up to below the float there. So he's nice and on. Not right below the float, because obviously that makes a little bit of like tight line on the body. So I like to have it a little bit away, just so obviously if you do hook a calf or something, there's not all that tight line on your rig, you know, your eye isn't gonna pull out. So I just have it a little bit down on the stem like that. This next little one, I'm just gonna slide him on. And he's just gonna go about halfway, just to hold the line nice and tight to my float. Like so. Like so, I went northern then. Get this longer one. If I can see, slide him on. Just move, just basically work its way up the line, basically. Just wedging him up. It's a little bit more fiddly, this longer one, because obviously it's a bit more, <clears throat> a bit bigger. Like so, and he's on the line now, perfect, obviously. I've got my piece there, one below the float, one in the middle and one just on that overhanging. So the float's nice and tight on the line now. And as you can see, with this Guru Silicon, it's not massive, it's not protruding. Um, and I just think that helps presentation. You definitely get more bites if your presentation's better. So that's just a little tip. Use nice, fine silicon like that. So I'm just going to move the float up the line now. Because obviously, where I was putting the actual silicon on, I've actually damaged the line there. Obviously working the silicon onto the float. So... I get that and trim that all off. So now I've just got a nice fresh line here. I'm just going to give myself a little bit more slack now. Move it up. And what I'm actually going to do is just create my loop now using a loop tire. So I'll just get my line and loop it round. Put my finger in that big loop like that. And put the neck of the actual loop tire underneath the loop here, which I've created with my, my fingers and my other finger, if that makes sense. And just twist it twice. To make like a double loop basically then get the actual crook of the loop tire get it put it in the loop and just let it all go tight like that just going to wet it up and then just work that work that loop off the loop tire so it creates my loop like that so i think it's a really nice strong loop it creates and it also makes it all the same size every time if i was just to make an overhand loop by hand it could be all different sizes so that loop tire just makes it all nice and efficient I'm just going to cut the tag off now. Perfect. So now I've got my float on my line and I've got my loop. So what I actually need now is a bit more slack. So obviously this loop is going to go over the pin on the end of the rig, mate. So just move that up. Get the pin off, obviously. Put that pin over that loop. So now the line's on here. I'm just going to tighten him up slightly. So the line's nice and tight now from the extension to the loop on the end of the rig, mate. Tighten him up nice and tight now because obviously you want a tight line when you're putting your shot on. And I'm just gonna move the float out of the way of where the actual shots are gonna go on. So now you can see we've got the rig strip on, we've got our rig ready to put our shots on. So what we're gonna do now, just mark where the actual shots themselves are gonna go. So obviously on the strip, it says exactly where to place these number nine shot and what size shots put on. So I've got one going on by the loop, so I'll just mark by the loop. And what I actually do is just push down the loop, push the line onto the actual rig strip itself um, to get like an accurate placing basically. 
run my finger along the line. So I'll get to where I need my next number nine and just mark the line. And then to the next shot, just mark the line. And again. And this float here is just a four by 14. It actually takes nine, seven, sorry, not nine, seven number nine shots. So obviously got my seven marks on there. I'm just going to slide this rhythm up a little bit. So obviously now it makes it a lot easier to see on the line where you need to actually place your, your shot. So I'm just going to open my shot up and use my pliers. I'm just going to place my shots on. Obviously on them black marks, that's where I want them. Following the strip. Just push down and clamp them on nice and hard. Obviously not too hard to crush the shots. You want them um, still like round, if that makes sense. You don't absolutely crush them on the line. So just a nice, gentle, steady pressure. Putting them all in place. That's two. Three. That shot I dropped, I'm gonna get that. Four. Five. Six. And the last one. Seven. So what I've actually got on this rig here itself is just a little strung out, like uh, a little tapered strung out bulk here. And I love that for soft pellets because obviously I'm lift, lowering and dropping all the time. And I just think your rig sits so fast if you just have this little strung out bulk. And those little skimmers can be a pain sometimes for um, giving you the smallest of bites. So obviously having big shots, like number nine shots, all nice and close to the hook is a, makes a massive difference. And on the actual strip itself, it says what hook length to put with it. So here we've got a four inch hook length, obviously to have those shots nice and close um, to the hook to register bites really, really fast. With 010 power line to a 16 SFL hook, like a nice big hook for pellets is really good. Cause obviously lifting and dropping those pellets, you don't want to come off all the time. So I still stick with a big hook with pellets. So that's really nice. Tells you what hook length to match up with it. And yeah, so now we've just got our little tapered strung bulk of number nines on and what I actually do here is just get the actual pin in the rig mate take it off so now we're ready to actually test the flow in the shotting tube and this is where the extension comes in so obviously it gives us loads of spare lines to play with so I just move my float down now so it's all nice I've all got my shots nice and close to my float like that and obviously with that spare line I can just put it in the tube and dunk him in as you can see he just needs a few number 13s now just to take him down He's like almost at the top of the body now. Might need one or two, might need one more extra little shot on. So then I can just get my rig and put it back on. Like so, I'm just gonna put on two number 13s, just get them out. And where I actually place these is just above the last shot on every rig I ever tie. So I'm just gonna put a few of them on, move that float out of the way again, up that line. Just place them on. The good thing about stops is they can move a little bit. They don't move, they don't damage the line these. So you can put these on, not like, you don't have to put them exactly in position to start with. Bit fiddly these because they're a bit small. And he's a fiddly little bugger. Right, he fell off. We'll try again with another one. one there's two and I've just slid, slid them all nice and neat to that last shot off of the rig basically so now we can test them in again slide the float down and I reckon it'll be about right now just needs another one or two actually Yeah, another one I'm saying, so I'm just going to put it back on. You can see how easy it is with that extra line now. Just keep putting the rig mate back on, just to fine-tune that rig. So, just get one number 13 on again. Just put him on. Test him again. Just give me a little dunk. 
now he's set about right ears. So obviously I've got it set to about half the bristle now, so it's absolutely perfect. Um, I don't like to set it any lower than like half the bristle to start with, because what can happen when you actually go to the lakes is it, the tension just makes it sit a little bit differently. It tends to sit a little bit lower, so I normally shot my floats about half the bristle, and then on the bank they sit absolutely perfect. So now it's time just to put him onto the winder. So I'm just going to put my rig down, just loosen it on the end of the extension here now. So obviously the line's nice and tight. And I've just got like a little Preston winder here, so obviously he's got a little hook on. Just put that loop on the little hook inside the winder and wrap him round to. And what I like to do with these winders here, these are, I think they're like 17 centimetre winders these are, and these little red ones here, if I do like 15 turns, it's about, it's about a top kit of line, and I'm not going to use this rig in any more than like a top five, six foot of water, so I know that's absolutely plenty. So five, six, seven, just loosen up a little bit more. Eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. And just like to bite the line off. And then I just tie a big overhand loop in this end to go on the end, so I just make a big loop wrap it round, just put it inside each other twice. So it's a nice big overhand loop to go on the end because I'm probably going to cut this down because obviously I like a nice short line with uh, soft pellets, just wet in. Just cut the tags, so obviously now I'm just going to wrap it round. Now I've got these little anchors on the actual rig itself, so I'm going to push, pull that down and put the actual loop of the actual rig over that anchor and yeah, the float's now nice, just in the middle of the actual winder itself, all the line on the one side. And yeah, that's the soft pellet rig, using the rig strips. You can see how easy it was. Obviously, it took me a little bit of time because I was demonstrating it. But once you get tying them, it's really, really fast process. And yeah, that's the soft pellet rig.